In this video, I will be reviewing and testing the newest laser engraver from Xtool. The Xtool S1 is a new generation diode laser engraver, which features fully enclosed design, industrial construction, autofocus, and precise two-point positioning system, and it also supports curved surface engraving. These are the features no other machine currently has. Watch this video to see how it works. I will also show you a lot of practical performance tests to see how well the S1 works in real-life scenarios. The Xtool S1 laser engraver is designed like fully enclosed CO2 laser cutters. It comes pre-assembled and the only thing that needs to be installed is the laser module. Here I have the 40-watt blue laser module, but the machine also supports 20-watt blue laser and 2-watt infrared laser module, which is great for engraving metals and plastic. The laser module features a red crosshair positioner and something that looks like a flame sensor. It also has an air assist port. The biggest new feature is the new focusing sensor. You will see how it works later in the video. Spoiler alert, it is awesome! The machine supports two different air assist types, the old one and the new one, which is what I have here. It is an automatic air assist, which can also be manually controlled. In the Xtool Creative Space software, you can individually set different air speeds for engraving and cutting process, so there is no need to worry about air assist control at all. The pump comes with two spare filters to ensure a long lifespan for the pump. Basic Pump does not have a replaceable filter. The Xtool S1 laser engraver also comes with a diverse material pack featuring slate stone, metal keychain, glass, colored paper, and faux leather, which looks very nice. It also comes with plywood and acrylic board. All these materials are great for discovering the capabilities of this laser. This laser engraving machine comes with these triangular slates, which you can use to put under the material instead of the honeycomb. But I opted to get the standard honeycomb. Honeycomb comes with these cool magnetic hold-down pins, which are very easy to use for holding down the material. On the side, you have the emergency stop switch, and on the back side, there is a connection panel for interfacing the machine with a computer and connecting all the attachments like RA2 rotary chuck attachment or the conveyor feeder. It also has an air assist inlet and port for connecting the fire extinguishing system. The Xtool S1 also boasts a five-direction flame detection system, which further reinforces its safety measures. This advanced system is designed to quickly identify any unusual conditions or hazards, such as the presence of flames, and automatically shuts down the laser operation or trigger the fire extinguishing system. The machine only works if this safety key is inserted. This is a great feature for preventing kids and unauthorized people from using the machine. You also get this fume extraction hose. You can use it to direct the fumes out the window or connect the hose to the smoke purifier, which filters almost all smoke and odors. This smoke purifier is definitely worth the money. I am currently using it with the Xtool P2 and it is awesome. If you want to engrave taller objects or use the rotary system, you can make the machine taller with a riser base. With the riser base, you can adjust the height of the honeycomb to two settings enabling you to engrave taller objects up to 125 millimeters, although the US version is different and has an adjustable base plate height and can support a bit taller objects. The use of riser base also enables you to use the rotary attachment, which I will showcase in my next video. The auto-focusing system in the Xtool S1 is very interesting. It uses a needle for probing the surface. This system works on all materials. It works in the Xtool Creative Space software, and it also works in Lightburn. In Lightburn, you need to add the custom Xtool settings file to get the macro controls needed for operating the focusing procedure. It is a bit more complicated, but it works almost as good as in the Xtool Creative Space software. Xtool S1 features precise position encoders on both axes. Because of that, the machine always knows where the laser head is located, even if you move the laser head by hand. 
This is a feature no other laser engraver currently has. Thanks to this feature, the Xtool S1 can offer a very practical two-point positioning system that ensures precise and accurate laser engraving on various objects. Start by defining an initial reference point by manually positioning the laser head at the starting point of the engraving on the material surface. Set a second point, often opposite or at a specific distance from the starting point. The Xtool XCS software calculates the engraving area based on the distance and coordinates between the two points. Input your design or text into the software to fit within the calculated space. Initiate the engraving process, and the engraving will be precisely positioned in the designated space. First, I need to measure the true optical power output of the Xtool S1 using my optical power meter. The Xtool S1 managed to hold the output power well above the specified output, which is great. Now let's start testing the Xtool S1 with my standard plywood engraving test. My standard plywood engraving test pattern consists of a power scale test, which shows how well the laser engraves at different speeds. The interval test shows us how the machine performs at engraving in horizontal and vertical direction. Any difference in performance would suggest a rectangular laser dot. The photo engraving test shows us how well it can engrave photos at different power levels. The power scale test shows a very good contrast even at high speed, which indicates good control over the output power across all power percentages. This is great for engraving photos as more contrast can be achieved. The interval test looks pretty much the same in both directions, which means that the laser spot is rectangular. We will measure it later when engraving anodized aluminum. Photo engraving also looks good, and the details are great. Compared to 40 watt Xtool D1, the pattern looks very similar, which is not surprising as the internals of laser diode are probably the same. Both machines also produce very little smoke stains, which is great. Here is how it compares to some other laser engravers. Notice that the 20 and 10 watt machines use slower speeds for all engravings. Over the years, I have tested many laser engravers. Feel free to check my other videos or visit my website hobbylasercutters.com where you can read all reviews. Next test on the list is the black anodized aluminum engraving test. The three squares are engraved at different speeds to see how stable the machine remains at different speeds. Engraving anodized aluminum produces very crisp and detailed engravings which are great for evaluating the machine's mechanical performance as well as measuring the laser spot size and shape. The main feature of the test is the interval test in horizontal and vertical direction. It is used for measuring the focus spot size and shape. The result looks good. Let's check it out with a microscope. Xtool S1 is a very precise laser engraver, and the laser spot looks very small. Small text engraving looks incredible. Here is the tip of a ballpoint pen for size comparison. The machine is much more stable than the 40 watt Xtool D1. The first square was engraved with 100 millimeters per minute, the second one at 1,000, and the last one at 10,000 millimeters per minute. The Xtool S1 is much more stable than Xtool D1 when dragging diagonal lines, although the Xtool D1 was already amongst the best in its class. The interval test shows us that the laser spot size is just under 0.15 millimeters in both directions. This is an amazing result, considering that this is an octadiode laser module. Next test on the list is the focus distance test. First, I measured the ideal focus distance and engraved the first square with zero millimeters written in it, which represents the optimal focus. 
Then I raised the laser head by 3 millimeters and engraved the second square. The head was raised by another 3 millimeters for the third square. For the last bit, the head was raised 9 millimeters in total. This allows us to see how much the laser spot gets enlarged further away from the optimal focus which happens when you cut thick materials. The larger the laser spot, the worse the cutting performance. The Xtool S1 did okay in this test. It was not the best, probably due to the laser module not being as tall as on other machines, as this affects the focal distance. You can check more detailed photos on my website hobbylasercutters.com. Now let's test how well the Xtool S1 performs at cutting poplar plywood. First, I tested cutting performance on 6 and 3 mm boards using my standard laser cutting test pattern. This pattern is testing cutting performance at 6 different speeds, 5 different numbers of passes, and 2 power levels, all in one single job. If you want to download these test patterns, check the video description or visit my website hobbylasercutters.com. Here is how the Xtool S1 compares to the 40 watt D1, which I have tested previously. As we can see, the S1 is much better at cutting 3 mm thick plywood, but at thicker 6 mm board, it performed almost the same. This may be an indication that the S1 has a laser beam that is more tightly focused at the optimal focus, but it diverges faster at greater distance. I have tested a lot of other lasers too. Check my other videos or visit my website to see other results too. Let's see how the Xtool S1 performs at cutting 10 mm thick plywood. At 300 mm per minute, it needed two passes to cut through. And at 600 mm per minute, it only needed three passes, which is still a very good result. The cut is relatively clean with not too much charring. Next on the list was the acrylic cutting test. For the 3 mm black acrylic, it needed only one and a half passes to cut through at 600 mm per minute. As you can see, the first cut has cut approximately two thirds into the material. This is the same cutting performance as the Xtool D1. I also tested cutting 10 mm acrylic and the Xtool S1 has cut through in six passes just like the Xtool D1 I have previously tested. The cutting result is great, with some white dust on the top due to the air assist. Now it's time to cut some thicker stuff with the Xtool S1. Here is an 18 mm thick spruce board, and it needed just over five passes to cut through at 300 mm per minute. This speed is too slow as it produces a lot of charring and some flames too. Then I tried to cut through at 600 millimeters per minute and it needed a bit less than seven passes. I also did this cutting test again with the laser head lowered by an additional seven millimeters. Comparing the results, we can see that if you lower the laser head, the cut looks a bit cleaner and almost half less passes are needed. The XCS software also supports automatic lowering of the laser head for cutting operations only, which improves the cutting performance, but does not affect the engraving quality. This is a very cool feature. I also attempted to cut the 38mm spruce plank, but the cut was not successful. The Xtool S1 is not as good at cutting thicker stuff compared to the Xtool D1, but on the other side, it is better at cutting thinner boards, which are more likely use scenario for a laser cutter like this. Then I tried engraving stainless steel. I used a very slow speed of 200 millimeters per minute, like I use for all machines in this test. I made two engravings, one directly on bare stainless steel and the other side was blackened with a black spray paint, which usually helped for lower powered machines. The 40 watt laser module is a bit too powerful for this slow engraving speed, and it left a very thick engraving, and it also warped the plate due to the excessive heat.
Because of that, I also tried with 10 times higher speed and the result was much better. With some more tweaking, a lot better results can be achieved. I also tried to engrave with maximum speed to see if the X-Tool S1 stays stable and is performing well at high speed, which was not the case for some other laser engravers. I engraved a vector design at 300 millimeters per second, which is the maximum speed for vector engravings. The machine remained stable, and you couldn't tell the difference from slower engravings. I am impressed. The X-Tool S1 claims to reach speeds up to 600 millimeters per second. I tested this by engraving a photo at maximum speed to see if there will be any compromise in precision when running the machine this fast. This is where you need to have the powerful 40 watt laser module as I have needed to set the maximum output power to 100% to get the desired engraving effect at this speed. The result looks very nice with very good details and a nice engraving depth. I am very impressed. Engraving with high speed will save you a lot of time. Lastly, let's test the curved surface engraving feature which is supported in the XCS software. With the focusing probe, you can measure a grid of points on the object you want to engrave. The software then converts those points into a 3D surface, and the Xtool S1 then automatically adjusts the focus distance in real time to keep the laser in perfect focus across the entire object. Very clever feature for engraving cups, mugs, spoons, and odd-shaped flasks. As you can see, the entire engraving was done in perfect focus.